Welcome to our St Gabriel's Worship from Home for this week. It's great to welcome you from wherever you are joining us from this week for our worship from home. If this is your first time with us at worshipping, you are very welcome to our service. Over the next 30 or so minutes, what we will do is we will sing some songs together, we will uh, worship together through the Bible and reflect on the Bible, we will pray for ourselves, our community and our church and also ask for sins forgiven. If you are new to St Gabriel's and this is your first time of worshipping, please check out all that goes on in the life of our church via our website and our newsletter and if you wish to donate to St Gabriel's you can do by clicking on the link below. We have lots going on in the life of our church over the coming weeks and the coming years and you will be very welcome to join us both on site and online for things like our prayer gatherings, for our small groups uh, and also our social activities as well as worship every week. If you wish to join us, as I say, you can find out more about all that's going on via our website. So we're coming into a time of worship. We're recognising that this time is holy. So let's take a moment of prayer now. So Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who died and is alive for us. We thank you for all you have done through him in our lives this week. And we pray now, as we come to worship you, that our hearts, our minds and our bodies can focus just on you. So meet with us, we pray, through your Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, let us start our worship by singing together now. bring him praise come all and tune your hearts to sing to the morning star of grace from the shifting shadows of the earth we will lift our eyes to him where steady arms of mercy reach to gather children Over all the world, his people 
sink Shorts and short wind and cold The truth that cries through every age Our God is all in all Rejoice, rejoice Let every tongue rejoice One heart, one voice O Church of Christ, rejoice Rejoice, rejoice Let every tongue rejoice One heart, one voice O Church of Christ, rejoice So we have sung together our first song, but we recognise that we don't always live up to the things and the ways that God calls us to. It's those things that Jesus called sin when he walked the earth. It's those things that separate us from God's love and the love of others. Uh, sometimes it's things that we've left undone and we've said that we would do and, and we don't. Sometimes it's uh, treating others in an unfair or unjust way. As I say, they are the things that Jesus called sin when he walked the earth. And we take a moment, like we do every week, to ask for forgiveness for those sins so we can start a new life and a new week with God afresh. So let's take a moment to privately confess before we say words together that will come up on screen beside me. So we say together, Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who were once dead, but now have life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, may you know the forgiveness of the Father through the death of his Son. And may you live in the power of the Holy Spirit now and always. Amen. Well, having had our sins forgiven, we are going to open up the scriptures together now. Uh, we are going to read and then we're going to take a moment to reflect on them. So let's open up our Bibles together. So we come uh, to the point in our service where we open up the scriptures together. Over the next year, we are going to be exploring the book of Acts each week. Uh, obviously we'll be taking a little bit of a pause for things like Easter and Pentecost, although obviously Pentecost is about uh, from the Book of Acts. But from this week, right the way up to Advent, we are going to be exploring that Book of Acts. We're going to be reading sort of a chapter a week or bits of that, that chapter a week. And we're going to be exploring what the Book of Acts says to us as a church, says to us as people of Christ, uh, of Christ followers, what it means to be a church in movement as we are going towards our church building being built and what it says to us of being a church in this place and as we form together. As we go through the book of Acts we are invited into a journey to think and explore about what that means for us each week. Because we know that the book of Acts is one that is about journeys and about uh, God's interaction through Jesus and the Holy Spirit with his people. And we're going to be exploring all of those things uh, week by week as we go through uh, that series. And as we do that, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be reforming as a church and as a congregation. Next uh, week, next time, we're going to be exploring our current vision statement. And as we reflect on the book of Acts over the coming year, we're going to reform that vision statement. Maybe actually what we're going to be doing is saying no it's right or thinking about what is to be 
So uh, as a brief introduction this week we're going to uh, have a brief overview of the book of Acts, of what it's about, what it means to us and what challenges it has. So we're going to read from the very beginning of the book of Acts. We're going to read from Acts chapter 1. Uh, so if you have a Bible with you, please open up the Bible and uh, open it to um, the book of Acts, which is just after the Gospels in the New Testament. I'm reading from chapter 1. In the first book, Theodopus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me, for John baptised with water, but you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit, not many days from now. This is the word of the Lord. So as we just heard, the book of Acts is the second part of a two-part series. It's um, not a sequel uh, like a film, but it's part two. And you will probably know that the writer of the book of Acts is St. Luke. And his first part was the Gospel of Luke. And the second part is the book of the Acts of the Apostle. The first part is the part of what Jesus did in his ministry when he was alive. And the second part is what he continued to do through the power of the Holy Spirit and through his power, through the apostles and of the church. And so we can't really read the book of Acts without reading the book of Luke, but we probably know most of the book of Luke already. And so we start our year and our, our journey through the book of Acts, knowing what Jesus had done already and the stories and having explored them through different gospels, we now look at how Jesus used individual people to transform and change the world. You see, Acts is a, book of, uh, is a book about what Jesus is continuing to do. And it's what he continues to do through the Acts of the Apostles, but also through us. And we will be his continued witnesses. And it's Jesus who links the two books together. You see, Acts is a book about journeys. Acts is, has more journeys than any other book in the Bible. Acts is a book of letters and of stories. It's a book of excitement and it's a book of bearing with. It's a book of puzzles and problems that the churches faced then as they formed and as churches, as our church, we still do as we continue to form and gather. It's a book of big questions about ethics, about finances, about politics, it's, uh, and about divisions, etc. Acts is a book of clashing cultures, a Jesus culture and a Roman culture very much like our Jesus culture now and the world we live in. And it's a book of excitement. It's a book of a, of a journey of how the church formed, of the ups and downs. And what's really great about it is we will recognise over the year that as we hear and read about how the church formed, actually some of those things are those things that we are going through as a church as well. 
And throughout the year, as I've said, we're going to be looking at the book of Acts in different ways. And, um, and one of the things we're going to be doing is looking at the chapter two of Acts twice. We're going to be looking at that next week, uh, the end part, and then we're going to be looking at the first part during Pentecost. You see, Acts is a story of people on a journey with Jesus. It's a story of those people being empowered by the Holy Spirit and leading them into a new places, into new times, into new cultures that is very different to the ones that they came from. And as we explore that book over the next year, we will go through that similar journey of hearing about how Jesus was leading the people and how Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, is leading us in this place as individuals and as a church, but also into the new place of our church building and that new phase of ministry that we will have here on Kings Hill and as a church in our community. And we will hear about how the Holy Spirit formed those new Christians in right and relevant ways and how Jesus will be forming us and shaping us through his Holy Spirit and how he is taking us to places that we wouldn't even know like he took those first apostles and what it means and where it's going for us as it was for them. And we will be looking at the vision of where we are now and where we are to be. And over the year we come to form together with probably on Advent Sunday a recommitment or a reforming of a new vision. It's a book of letters and of stories, of sharing of what God has done and what God was doing. It was the WhatsApp or the Facebook posts, the YouTube videos of what Jesus did and the stories. They weren't meant to be poured over. They were shared with people, with congregations, with groups of people of what Jesus was doing through the, his apostles, what Jesus had moved through the Holy Spirit, how lives were being changed and formed. And it was those regular updates, very much like we receive today on Facebook or on YouTube videos. It was to be read afresh, so let us read it afresh. Let us read afresh of what Jesus did through the Holy Spirit. Let us read afresh of what Jesus did through his disciples. Let us read afresh of the new converts, of the stories and of the journeys and about the parts that we play because Jesus calls us to do the same. And about how the disciples of Jesus were being called and used by him through the Holy Spirit to transform lives and how we as disciples of Jesus are being called by the Holy Spirit to transform lives in our places and in our community through us individually and through our church. And the whole book of Acts reminds us that whatever journey we are on either as individuals or as a church. It's our spirituality of following Jesus and our works for his kingdom and his spirit that will guide us to make him fruitful, make us fruitful in his spirit and in his service. These books are about how God's kingdom came on earth and heaven through his church and through his disciples and through his spirit. And we are invited into that story to see how we are ones that come together to form his kingdom in this place, in our lives and through us. 
It's a book about sharing the good news of words and actions to each other so each individuals and each groups can be um, enlivened and reminded of what Jesus did, does and of what remarkable things he does even in the face of adversity and again that's what we are called to do is to tell each other to remind each other to share with each other those miraculous signs of the Holy Spirit it's a story of prayer in the Holy Spirit it's a story of prayer and worship of communities going and being together and sharing together. It is the forming of a diverse Jesus communities where people were treated equally no matter what their status and they because they gave their allegiance to Jesus and because they were guided by the Holy Spirit and it was their trusting and guidance on the Holy Spirit that allowed them to create these unique countercultural communities formed round Jesus. And that's what we do in St. Gabriel's. That's who we are in St. Gabriel's. A Jesus community equals because we worship Jesus. Prayers because we are led and worshiped by the Holy Spirit. Community transformers because we are led by Jesus and the Holy Spirit and one together because we are led by Jesus and the Holy Spirit. The early disciples prayed in the Holy Spirit to be led and guided to new places and to create these communities just as we do. And it was fantastic on Wednesday last week to have a group online and on site praying together to be formed in the Holy Spirit as a church for where God is leading us individually and also together. The book of Acts is a book based in the resurrection and in the power of the Holy Spirit. It's a book of the Spirit where Jesus is alive, where God is preaching and acting in the power of the Holy Spirit through and us and for us. And I realise I've just said the power of the Holy Spirit and Jesus a lot in this introduction because that's what we will see and we will recognise because as the disciples and the apostles go on their journeys it is the Spirit that leads them, it is the Spirit that powers them and it is Jesus that transforms lives. And for us as individuals, it's for us to listen to the Spirit today, to be called into that Spirit and to be changing of our communities. It is of us coming together to share what God and Jesus has done. And it is also for us to build each other up, to support each other and come into community as we will hear about next week. Because as we do that, we hear the stories, but we also tell of the stories, but we also look after those in our congregation and also those outside who are in need. Because when the kingdom of Christ comes near, it comes through us to the people in our communities and the places where we live. This book reminds us that whoever we are, we are called into the Holy Spirit. We are called in to the journey of Christ. And the book of Acts doesn't end with Paul in Rome because we are continues to be the central actors in the story that we have read and participate in. 
and because we are as both congregations and as individuals. The Book of Acts is relevant in our lives. The culture that um, the Book of Acts is set in is so similar to the world that we live in at the moment that we should be drawing the parallels of what's going on and what the Jesus people are doing in our lives and in our communities. So join me this year as we journey through this book. Join me as we explore how God is calling us. Join me in walking with Jesus in the power of the Holy Spirit this year. Join me as we as a church form together with new purpose and new journeys. And join me in listening to what the Spirit is calling you and us to be and to do. And join me as we hear and see what Jesus is doing in our lives and in our church's community. So we pray, Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can read and hear the stories of your early church of what Jesus did through the power of the Holy Spirit. And as we live attentive to you, challenge us and change us, we pray. Make us into Jesus' people. Amen. So having opened up our Bibles together and having reflected on the scripture, we turn to song again. So let us sing. Yes. 
So having sung our second song, let us take a moment to profess the faith that we have in Jesus and the faith that we live by and the way that we live. Join me in these words from the book of Philippians. Though he was divine, he did not cling with equality with God, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a slave. He was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God raised him on high and gave him the name above every other name, that at the name of Jesus, every voice, every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. So having professed that faith, having confirmed that, we are going to pray in that faith now as we turn to that moment where we pray for ourselves, we pray for our community, and we pray for the world around us. So let us join together in prayer. Sunday the 12th of February is Racial Justice Sunday this year, and churches together in Britain and Ireland are marking the 30th anniversary of the racist killing of teenager Stephen Lawrence which took place on the 22nd of April, 1993. God of love, you call us into your presence, gathered one and all in the richness and beauty of diversity that you willed into being. We bring our voices together in harmony with yours. God, in your mercy, show me my own complicity and in injustice. Convict me for my indifference. Forgive me when I have remained silent. Equip me with a zeal for righteousness. Never, never let me grow accustomed or acclimatised to unrighteousness. Amen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers for an end to racism. Lord, in your grace, open our hearts and provoke us to respond with action. Lord, in your righteous anger, empower your prophets to speak truth to power. Lord, in your love, bind us together in solidarity with a shared vision to do justice, love mercy and walk humbly towards an end to racism and into your kingdom of love made real here on earth. Amen. Heavenly Father, in sorrow we lift to you the people of Turkey and Syria facing unthinkable devastation and loss after the earthquakes this week. We pray for international efforts to reach those who have lost their homes, lost loved ones, or are injured. May the world give generously to help rebuild shattered lives and communities. And as we think of other places across the globe that are facing the consequences of terrible disasters, we ask you strengthen the hands of agencies helping with recovery, and give signs of hope to people affected. We ask again for peace in Ukraine, as the anniversary of the outbreak of war in that country approaches. We plead for an end to the violence and terror that war has brought to that land. Lord Jesus, be close to members of our church and community who are unwell at this time. We ask for patience and healing for all those known to us. Be close, Lord, to those in our community who mourn the loss of a loved one. 
at a time when many feel so alone in their grief. Help us to show through our kindness and commitment that we are available for them in their deep sadness and that you are holding them in your loving arms. Finally, as we've heard in Acts 1 of the introduction Jesus gave to the coming of the Holy Spirit, asking his followers to wait for the Holy Spirit, the promise that the Father would baptise them in the Holy Spirit. May we too be ready for the Spirit's indwelling in our lives, prepared to be transformed and equipped to do your will this coming week. We ask these prayers in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. We conclude our time of prayer together by saying the words that Jesus taught us through that of the Lord's Prayer. So we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the power kingdom and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Well, we're coming towards the end of our service now. In a moment, we're going to sing our final song. But just a reminder, you can join us in worship, both on site and online every week. And we have Bible studies where you can join us online or on site every week as well. Please join us uh, at some point during the week. And if you are worshipping with us online solely, let us know you're there. Comment below. Leave us a message so we can pray for you. So as uh, we go into this week, may you know the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And may it be and dwell amongst you and in your homes now and forever. Amen. Go into this week in the peace and love of the Lord. Amen. We sing our final hymn of praise. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. the uh-huh.